Good afternoon, I believe ministries. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to welcome you to our weekly Bible study. And our goal is to uplift the name of, of God and to learn from his word. And as we learn from his word, we are we learn with a purpose to get to know him better. And by knowing him better, allowing our knowledge of him and his word and his will and his purpose to change our lives. So we can grow closer to him and walk more like him. And the more we get to know Christ, the more he changes our life. And those life changes are eternal. But we have walking with Christ is a walk of faith. It's a walk of faith. And in order to, to, to be able to better walk with Christ, keep up with Christ, stay close to Christ, then we have to study his word. Because his word is his will. His word is his purpose. And study his word with the, with the intent of believing. Believing to the point of doing. See, faith is action. Faith is not just hearing. Even the demons believe. The Bible testifies the demons believe of who Jesus was. But what separated them from us? They didn't believe. They didn't repent. They didn't follow. We as believers, and then we must follow Christ. We must turn from our wicked ways and walk in the ways of Christ through faith. I believe plus I act equals my faith. And with faith, all things are possible. We just finished a, I think it was a great series on uh, in the month of October on healing. And it was holistic he healing, not from the perspective of maybe from the medical field or the earthly field or, but the holistically from God. Healing of our bodies physically, our minds and our spirits. Not only do we need healing from our the physical ailments that we have to endure because we live in this fallen world, but we have to also sometimes be healed from uh, the sin that we have committed and what sin has caused to take place in our lives. We need healing from that. Healing from fears and, and thoughts and, and so many of things, so many other things that could that can attack us and destroy our peace. Because anytime we don't have peace, then, then we're sick. Something is wrong. We need healing. And we can, and, and, and going through our series, then we, we learn that we can gain that peace that is promised to us through, through Jesus Christ, through his healing. Please, let's not cheat ourselves to only expect healing, physical healing from Jesus Christ. He can give us mental, spiritual, healing, all the peace that we need so that we can be whole. Now we're going into the month of Thanksgiving, November, month of Thanksgiving. And each Thanksgiving, in, in my heart and in my spirit, I feel like we have great uh, lessons that strengthen us and us being more thankful for what the Lord has done, number one, for what the Lord has done and, and the places that we are in life. We 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 took this year, we we um kind of took being thankful to another level level to a certain extent because we learned to even be thankful in our affliction, in our trials, to be thankful. 
because it only leads to us being closer to God, us being better than we were before we went into the trial and and and, and the the test and the temptation and the affliction. We come out better than we was when we went in, and even knowing Christ even better. And it's all gonna work to the good for us. So instead of having our normal physical earthly reaction to affliction and being sad, pity parties and all those things, woe is me. No, we, we rejoice and begin to believe and trust in the Lord and, and hang on and grow closer to God and walk in his ways and walk in the strength that he guys has gives us during the time and and, and the 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 guidance that he gives us during that time. And we depend on him. So in this month of November, we will again um, strengthen ourselves in thankfulness and giving. And, and I think it will be very beneficial to us as believers. I believe plus I act equal with my faith and with faith, all things are possible. And, and by learning the, the things God teaches us through his word about being thankful, about being about giving, it only makes us more like Christ. And it only blesses our lives in ways that we can't imagine. So we only hurt ourselves when we're not being thankful and we're not giving. So in that vein, today we're going to look at giving. Today we're going to look at giving. And we're going to look at role models. In, in the Bible, there is, there is a few role models that were in the Bible that shows us and demonstrates to us God's will. And they do it unexpectedly. See, when we're doing things for God, when we're doing things for Christ, we, we're not looking for attention. No, we're looking to please God. We're, we're, we're the, our expectation and our purpose is to do what it is that God desires for us to do through his word, through his spirit. And that's the only thing that we have. That's the only goal and intent that we have by doing these things. And the people in this lesson today, that was their only goal to, to show how thankful they were by giving. Thankful. What were they thankful for? They were thankful for being saved. Oh. How many are you thankful right now for being saved? Oh, it's such a, it's such a, 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 a blessing to be knowledgeable and understanding enough to know of how much of a blessing it is that we're saved to have eternal life in the presence of God and that our final home, our final destination is in the presence of the Lord. No more sickness, no more dying, no more bills, uh, no more stress, anxiety, uh, worries, concern. No, just in the presence of God, whole, peaceful, and in joy. That's, that's something to be thankful for. That alone. All right, as we get into our text today, our text comes from 2 Corinthians first. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And our title for our lesson is The Grace of Giving. The Grace of Giving. 2 Corinthians 8 chapter verses 1 through 5. All right, I begin by reading our text in the King James Version. Moreover, brethren, do we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. And I read that in, in, in the New Living Translation. Now I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God 
and his kindness has done through the churches in Macedonia. Verse two, how that in a great trial of affliction, look at that word, in a great trial of affliction, my Lord, my Lord, we learn sometimes it's good that we're afflicted oh, because it makes us depend on the Lord. Oh, my goodness. And the people in this story are in a great trial of affliction. Then it says the abundance of their joy. Now, the words joy and affliction generally don't go together unless you are a believer in Christ. Because he says, count it all joy. So we see again, it's played out. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty. They had joy in deep poverty. You ever heard of somebody saying, they, I'm deeply poor? <laughs> the Bible describes these people as being in deep poverty. We will look at that. They are bounded unto the riches of their liberality. All of that was what you would call like oxymorons, you know, how could you be in a trial and have joy? Or how can you be in deep poverty, but then have riches? That is enough to draw us in. See, when we live with Christ, the rules of this world and, and, and the confinement of this world, we are not confined. We are, we are, we are not held down by our circumstances around us. We have a joy that cannot be explained because we have the joy of salvation. See, these people have a joy of salvation in the midst of affliction. They have joy. <laughs> they have joys. Rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice. See, count it all joy. See, they had abundance of joy in their affliction. And in deep poverty, they had riches of liberality. In other words, they had what they had, they had enough to want to give to others. In their poorness, in their deep poverty, being poor, they what they had, they wanted to give to others. It says in the in the, in the New Living Translation, they are being tested by many troubles and they are very poor. But, I love that word, but means that God is in the picture. <laughs> but they are also filled, filled with the abundant joy, which has overflowed in rich generosity. My Lord, we will look at that. For to their power, I bear record. Yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. Praying. See, praying. They were praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord. Woo. They did what? They first gave their own selves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. Now, let me read that in, in, in the New Living Translation. Starting with verse two. They are being tested by many troubles and they were very poor, but they are also filled with abundant joy. They were being tried and tested, and they were poor, but they were filled with abundant joy. The joy that overflowed in rich generosity. Rich generosity. I love that word. If they're poor, how did they have rich generosity? See, when you deal with God, God math is different than our math. We, we, we're going to look at that. God math is different than our math. Verse three says, for I can testify, this is Paul, that they gave not only what they could afford, 
They gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it of their own free will. They begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift for the believers in Jerusalem. They begged them to give. They begged them to give. Now, how many people you know be begging you, you, you to give? I want to give. I want to give. They beg them to give. What a blessing. My Lord. They bled, they beg. It says, and I continue, uh, verse four, they begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift for the believers in Jerusalem. They even did more than we had hoped for their first action was to give themselves to the Lord and to us. Their first action was to give themselves to the Lord, my Lord, and to us, just as God wanted them to do. Very, very, very par powerful scripture. I started to do verses one through nine, and we can work our way up into those, those verses. Um, what we see here is, is, is a scripture that really kind of should just knock on our sense of logic. It could, should just be tapping on our sense of not, knowledge, a, a logic and saying like, wait a minute, this, those, this thing don't kind of go quite together. You know, this, this is different. So let, let's let's kind of learn. Let's look at this topic because I think it, it it will speak volumes to us as believers. See, I think it will speak volume to us. All right. So the first thing we want to look at is who is writing this? Paul. Paul is writing this to the Corinthian church. He's writing this letter to the Corinthian church. What is going on in Paul's life? Paul is on it on his mission, is on his third missionary. And the people in the church in Jerusalem, the believers in Jerusalem, see, were going through very tough times. They were very poor and they were being persecuted. See, at the time in Jerusalem, uh, persecution came out, came upon the, the 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 believers in Christ, the Christian believers, those in the way. They were being persecuted by who? The Jews, the Romans, all right? To the point that it was almost impossible for them to live there and make a living. Because if they found out that they were Christians, if they didn't arrest them or beat them or take everything that they own, they... they they uh, had them fired from their jobs. Um, they couldn't do certain things. They, they were just generally being persecuted. So it left the believers in, the, in, in, in Jerusalem very poor and, and very afflicted. How many of us have had to go through that much to, to believe in Jesus Christ? Maybe the better question is how many of us are willing to go through those circumstances to follow Christ? And on that question, every one of our hands should be up simply because what we have to experience here is temporary because what Christ offered us offers us is eternal life. So we have to be afflicted. We have to be persecuted. That's just a small thing for eternal life. See, that's I believe plus I act equal my faith. That's faith in action. We, we generally don't have to show our faith to that degree here in the United States. We just can say we believe and, and, and do our best to walk and live in the spirit of the things that God has and not worry about having bodily harm. But this is what was not the case in the believers. They believed. 
they believed and knew that their salvation came in the Lord to the point that they would take the persecution and, and the, the mistreatment and the, and all the things they had to go through because of their beliefs. But Paul, on his missionary journey, was guided by the Spirit and encouraged by, by others to take an offering for those in Jerusalem. The apostles and the believers in Jerusalem, he would take an offering from the different churches that he established and in different places in those churches that he established and with the intent we're taking that offering back to the believers and to um, show them benevolence. See, benevolence. So now he, he has been to different churches. He has been to uh, the church in Galatia. It's where he believed that he's writing this letter from Galatia. He has been to churches in Macedonia. We will look at, see, Archaea. These are all the churches in this area. Now he, he's writing to the people at Corinth. He's a little nervous about the people at Corinth. He don't know if they're going to really be to do what they need for them to do or, or, or a desire for them to do. And that is to give and help other believers. So he is writing this letter to, to further strengthen them and the task in which they had promised to do. So what he's doing, he's telling them about, he's telling them about the church in Macedonia. He's describing what the believers did in Macedonia. So as he's writing this letter to the people of Corinth, he's, he's talking about in our verses about the church in in Macedonia, about the way that they gave and under the, the conditions that they gave. Y'all, it, it should be inspiration to us. Because, see, all we have to do is just trust God and trust the Spirit. See, once we give ourselves to Christ, then we are a new creature. Old things are passed away. And, and and new things are in us and should manifest itself in the way things that we do, the way that things that we say, and the way that we act. And and, and it should manifest itself in, in fruits of the spirit. And that should should lead to us being more giving to others because of the spirit and the heart and the guidance that that has been has changed us through the spirit. So we see this in action. We see this in action. So as we look at our text, it says, now, I want to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the churches. I want you to know. See, this is Paul telling the people in Corinth. I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the churches in Macedonia. See, he went to Galatia and he asked them and he got uh offering. He went to Archaea, asked them and got the offering. Even in, in, in other cities in the uh, Philippi, he went, he took uh an offering to give. And now he was coming to this city, particular city in Macedonia. And when he got there, he saw the people that they were believers. But then he saw the condition that they were in. And he really wasn't there to ask them of any for any funds to help the people in Jerusalem. I wonder why. Because he saw their poverty and their affliction and the condition that they were living in. So he dare not burden them for others. <laughs> but the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord. See, when we walk by sight, then we walk in the physical, we miss it. 
If we think of things are what they look like, we miss it. So Paul wasn't going to even ask them because of the condition that they, what condition were they in? They were being tested by many troubles. Meaning that they could be living in the hood, living in the projects. They could believe, be living in hillbilly uh, city where it's one light, no food, no water, no whatever things. It just looked like they were just being afflicted and oppressed. You know, they could be getting taxed heavily. They could be second class citizens. See, it's, it's when he saw that the condition that they were in, he didn't even want to ask them. See? But he had no choice. They gave him no choice. Because they had something that he didn't see with his, with his, with his regular eye with his physical eye. He said, they are being tested by men in troubles and they are very poor. They ain't hard to have nothing. They probably, you know, you just imagine whatever kind of houses may look like with people who didn't have money in that place. That's the kind of houses that they had. That's the kind of condition that they lived in. With his natural eye, that's what he saw. They are being tested by men in troubles and they are very poor. So he really wasn't there to ask them for money. But what kind of people were they? They were believers, y'all. They were believers. They were uh, people that lives had been changed because of the word. The apostles, Paul, see, Barnabas could have been Silas. Any of the apostles that came and preached the word and they believed. And their lives were changed. Despite the circumstances that they lived in, and the conditions that they lived in, it may have been death all around them, poverty all around them, lack of hope all around them. They had, they gained a light from Christ. They gained salvation from Christ. See, they gained salvation from Christ and their lives were changed. So now that they weren't confined by the conditions that they were in, now they were living in the life that was promised in Jesus Christ. And that life is eternal. Yeah, I might be in the hood now. Yeah, I might not have no money now. Yeah, I might be in jail now. Yeah, I might be whatever conditions. But it's just temporary. See, I have an eternal home through Christ Jesus. He has placed in me joy of salvation. And I am happy to be alive in Christ. I don't care if I don't have all the riches in the world. I don't care whether it is I have eternal life, I have salvation. My life is changed. I have a joy that cannot be explained. That's what these people had. Why? Because of the word. Because of the word that was given to them. Because of, and they heard and they believed the word and they were saved. And they wanted to, to help. They had a spirit. They had a grace. See, you have to have a grace to do things. How many of y'all know you have to have a grace to do things? If you don't have a grace to do things, there's certain things in life you can't do. You just can't do it. Go in a kindergarten classroom today and try to teach it and don't have the grace for it, you will see real quick, I ain't got the grace to do this. I can't. When you're supposed to say, I can't do this. They don't have the grace to do it. They don't have, God will give, when God gives you the grace to do things, you can do things that others find horrible, I mean, really difficult to do because they just don't have the tolerance or the mindset or whatever to do it. The grace to do things. God gave them and, and, and his salvation and, and his saving salvation, one of the fruits of the spirit that was manifest upon this group of people was the grace of giving. It's mentioned like four times in the first in the first nine verses of this chapter. 
the grace to give. It says in the first verse, it says, moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. The grace that God had put on the churches of Macedonia. <laughs> See, he's, talking, he's, he's, he's bragging on his church. He's using his church as a role model, the grace that God put on them. To do what? To give. Y'all, the Lord has given each and every one of us a grace as well. To give. To give. One thing I know, and with one Bible study we had, like in one of our previous uh, Thanksgiving series, you can't be God given. The more you give away, the more he give back to you. Can't be God given. If you don't believe it, try it. I guarantee you. So they had a grace for giving. And it says, you, so you see the conditions that they were in. So this is what he's seeing. Like, oh, I ain't even worried. These people, these people. Shoot, if anything, I need to be taken up. See, his thing was, I probably need to be taken up an offering for them. They are being tested by many troubles. And just say, like, it said, when they put the word many, that meant something. It wasn't like, that meant something. They were being tested by many troubles. I can think of things today in our hoods and our poor communities. Many troubles. Lack of money. Uh, lack of an education, lack of a family. See, these are things that go on in the hoods, black, white, Chinese hoods, whatever. Lack of opportunities, lack of cleanliness, lack of resources. Those are all the things, those are the troubles of our of our communities that are in poverty now. Lack of role models. See? Many troubles. <laughs> Look at all the things that they had to overcome to be successful. And Paul going in the midst of that, what he looked like going in the middle of that and asking people for money. It's just like us going in the middle of that Salvation Army and asking them for money. Or people in whatever hood and asking them for money. And it says, if he didn't think that was enough, he says, and they are very poor. But <laughs> what did they have? They might not have that, but they had something. And what they had was everything. But they are also filled. And it just said, had some. He said, they were poor and had many troubles, but they were filled, y'all. Filled. And, 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 and the King James Version said they had a, an abundance <laughs> of what? Joy. Oh, I could just go back to my childhood. And many people that are older than me can go back to their childhood. Where we kind of grew up like with pretty much like what we had, but we were happy. We sat on porches and shell peas and we 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 helped each other. The neighbor helped us, we helped the neighbors, we helped our family members. Oh, we ain't have much of nothing. Our schools were the oldest schools, you know, our community didn't look like their community. But we had joy, y'all. In our communities, then, the, the crime, I mean, it was crime everywhere to a certain extent, but it, it was no crime like it is now. Why? Because we had joy. We were filled with joy at those times, even though we did not have. And where did that joy come from? The joy just didn't come because, well, I'm just living in the hood. I'm just happy because I live in the hood. No. The joy came from the salvation of the Lord. 
because the Lord had given us something. See, they had received what the Lord had given them. What did the Lord give them? See, if we go back and down into verse 9, it says, You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty he can make you rich. So they were rich. They were rich. They were rich in the love of Christ and the salvation that they had in Christ. They were rich. See, they weren't bound by their poorness. When I say poorness, their lack of earthly resources. No, they had, they had, they had salvation in Christ. They were new creatures. So it wasn't about what they didn't have, y'all. It wasn't about what they didn't have. See, Paul was describing what they didn't have. But see, all they were concerned was what they did have. And what they did have was salvation. They were saved by Christ. And all they wanted to do was live out the salvation that was in them. And living out the salvation, all of a sudden now they were rich. They had joy. See, they, they were rich. They had joy. Everybody else in the hood walking around. Oh, I'm poor. I ain't like other people. Ain't got. They ain't have no. They ain't have no problems. They might not have the physical amount of resources, but they had salvation. They had a joy that cannot be explained. So when you looked at them, then you looked at they got something that you want. People who don't who are not saved are looking at these people at them. They're just as poor as them are poor, and they are happy and filled with joy. And they have a salvation. They have an era a light in them that where in the world did they get that light? That's as believers are what we supposed to be like. Yes. Goals. That's, that should be G-O-A-L-S. Goals for us. See, I started to name this lesson role models because they are. Paul is telling them about the Macedonian people and Corinth are people who had means. But he finna brag to them about the folks who didn't have means because they live like Christ. They will feel that their, their life is filled with richness. They were rich. They had an abundance of joy. They overflowed with the rich generosity. Rich generosity. In, in other words, they said that they had a spirit to give what they did have, they had the spirit to give with what they did have. They had an overflow. Because they had the joy, they had an overflow. It said they had an overflow of generosity. So how did that play itself out? So Paul, here's the thing. Like I said, he ain't going to try to ask them for nothing. He says, for I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, <laughs> but far more. And they did it of their own free will. Now, I'm going to give you something, and I don't want you to ever forget it. When we talk about paying our tithes, say pay 10%, and you tell me what what part of the Bible it is. That's a part of the what? The law. So if you live it under the law, you take the law, you got to take all the law. All right. All right. Yep. Yep. Reverend Evans done said it. Now, we are held, but let me help you understand, we are held to a higher standard. Now we are to give from our heart, from the life-changing power of our heart. So what does that, how should that play itself out? That meant that you shouldn't be, if your heart want to give 30% of what you give, 30%. It could be all. It could be all. It could be 50%. We are held to give what we are convicted to give by our heart and our spirit. 
not just ten percent. Don't be bound to ten percent. No, no, don't get me wrong. Now you can start there. You can be there. That could be what you know. I'm not knocking it, but I'm just saying we are held to a higher standard. See, we are held to a a, a higher standard. Oh. There's so many verses in this text that, that tells us uh, 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 how we should be, be given. See? Give to a higher standard. Now, so they gave not only that, but they gave more. See, they gave more. Yep. Now, let's look at, again, verse 3, for I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it of their own free will. They did it from their heart, from their spirit, because they had a desire to give, to give to the believers in Jerusalem. Why? Why? Because they gave them the words that led to their salvation. They introduced them to Christ. See, what they gave them was far more valuable. They gave them the riches. They have abundance. They have, look what they, they have. Oh, so now, how do I know that Paul had no intentions of really asking these people because he see the condition that they were in? Look at verse four. It says they begged us. <laughs> Paul wasn't even to ask them, but they knew that he was getting money from other places and carrying them back to. The people with the intent of carrying to the, the poor in, in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So he wasn't even finna ask them, but guess what? When he was about to leave or whatever, but it, when he didn't really never ask them, guess what they did? They asked him. They say, hey, we, we hear that you taking money to give to the believers. Hey, you gonna take out our money ain't good? You know, I'm using my own. <laughs> I'm adding my own words to this part. Oh, our money ain't good enough for you. You know, that's probably what some people would say. But in other words, you're not going to ask us? He says they bid us again and again. <laughs> they had a heart to give. But wait a minute, ain't, aren't they poor? Aren't they in a position that they don't have anything? Aren't they under affliction themselves? So easy could say, I ain't got it. I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. You know what he say. Somebody need to give me some money. <laughs> but why didn't they say that? Because they were new creatures. Old things have passed away. That's what a, a person who live in the flesh would say. We don't live in the flesh. We live in the spirit. So we have what you call love. We have what you call grace. See, all you got to do is be thankful for what the Lord has done for you. What They were thankful for what the Lord had done for them. So what little bit they do have, they want to give because they were thankful for what they had. What did they have? salvation they had christ jesus they had joy they had the holy spirit they had his presence in the midst of poverty and tribulation they had the presence of god they had the promise of salvation they they had the holy spirit see so they they they, they were changed they had everything they had what more than they ever had in their life and more than they ever could get. They had it. 
and they wanted to 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 give because of, of, of what the Lord has done for them. They want to be a blessing to others. See, when we can be when we can be honest with what God has given up to us, then we and be thankful for we 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 should and he showed and we understand that he showed us he gave us this through his grace see there was his grace there was his love for us there was his unmerited favor for us and we should be willing to share that with somebody else let me help somebody else because god helped me they did not want to be left out of the blessing they did not want to be listen to this they did not want to be left out of the blessing of being a blessing. <laughs> See, everybody else was blessing the other people, you know. And you you know when you give from your heart and you give from your spirit and you give from, from, from the heart and the spirit that's placed in you, it's a joy to do it. Jesus says it's better to give than receive when you're giving from the heart and the spirit and from love. It is because it's a it's a joy and a happiness you have because you share what was shared with you. You can't beat that. They didn't want for to, to miss the blessing. They said that they did not want to be left out of the blessing, left out of the blessing of being a blessing. So they begged. And if you didn't hear the first time, Paul said it again. They begged us again and again. Look what he said. For the privilege of sharing in the gift for the believers in, Jer in Jerusalem. The privilege. See, the privilege to give. It was an honor to be able to help others with whatever you have, y'all. See, one thing I want you to understand is give what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. Give what you have. Because when you give what you have, now God uses his math. And y'all know about God math. See? <laughs> oh, come on now. Let's look at God map just a little bit, all right? Just a little bit. We're just going to look at a little bit of God map. Okay? You take two fish and you take five body loaves of bread. That's enough to feed one boy, maybe his friend. But when you give it to Jesus Christ, when you give it to God, it can feed 5,000. See, that's how God do math. <laughs> he can take you a little bit and he can stretch it out. See, he can make it more than enough to, to serve his purpose. He can do all things. See, the little bit that they gave is a testament to us today. It has really helped us understand that we should have a grace for giving. Yeah. We should have a heart for giving. We should. That should be a, 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 a result of the spirit that dwells in us because we are thankful for the salvation that we have and understanding that anything that we have above our salvation is a blessing. It's a blessing. Because see, really the only important thing I have in life is my salvation, is the joy of my salvation. Everything else belongs to the Lord. The world can take it away, just like you can have your money in stocks and bonds and every kind of bank you want to. It can be gone. It can't save you. It's things that can happen in your life that that, that money can't help. But see, that salvation that I, I have and that you have, can't nobody take it. Nobody. Even on my dying bed, on my dying bed, I can smile and be at peace because I know 
that when my eyes close, they're going to wake up beside Jesus Christ or in the midst or in the presence of Jesus Christ. See, so all this other stuff, it don't mean anything. We can use that to be blessings to others, to help others. As we go into our, our, our new year, I'm talking about New Year. As we go into the month, we get close to a new year, though. But as we go into the month of, of, of Thanksgiving, November, we, we really stress thank, being thankful and be, and giving because we always need lessons to strengthen us in that area. See, we, we always need to be strengthened. When you work out your body, you just don't work out legs. You work out arms, legs, everything, so your whole body can be strong. And we want our body, our, our spiritual body to be strong. So we have to study the, these topics, and they, and they are good. Last year, I, 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 I remember very clearly, and it's just a testimony for me, just to tell you how good God is. And you can't be him given. Uh, I, I said that in teaching this lesson, it really had changed my me on what I thought what giving was, and I, 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 I'm I having to learn to give more because many times I'm like, you need to get a job or whatever, whatever, all the things that we can say. All right, but it, it really has made a point for me to, to give more. So I made up in my mind to do more, just try to do more, do more. And now I find myself in position like, like 365 days later. Yeah. Probably half of my time in my life and daily chores are going to be activities to help others, giving, raising money uh, to give to others. Now, look at that. See, you can't be God giving. When you start giving, I'm telling you, when you start giving, the Lord, the Lord just. He just be, he just shows you he is the Lord. When you trust him and you walk and you obey that 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 spirit to tell you to, to think about this thing, stop being covetous of what you have. Man, you get them $20, man, I give you $40. God be looking at you like, man, get on that $20. I got $60. Don't worry about it. You act like I can't replace that. See, when you don't mind giving what you have, and then on the, the with the foundation that the Lord is going to 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 uh, take care of me. See, many people don't give, and for many reasons, and it's just like you know, because they feel like I don't have it. If I give this, I ain't I don't have nothing. Look at these people. They gave the little bit they had. They gave. So how were they going to make it? They don't know, but they know what? They trusted the Lord to, that the Lord would take care of them. And when we give from that foundation, it's, it's limitless of how God can bless our lives and bless those around us. Bless you for giving it. And then look at this, y'all. And bless the five, 10, 15, 20 dollars that you gave, it could be like it could feed 5,000 people. That 20 dollars, or you know, I'm just using that as an example. We have it is if we are to be like Christ, then one of the ways that we have to live, if we have to live from a, a position of giving, and I read verse nine again, we'll bring it to a close. It says that in verse 9, that you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, houses on many hills, cattle on thousands of hills. Though he was rich, yet for your sake and mine, he became poor. In other words, he gave up his riches. And who did he give it to? So that by his poverty, we could be made 
rich. See, Jesus, God gave his son. God, our role model, our example, God gave his son, his only son. And his only son, Jesus, gave his life. They gave. So for us to be like Christ did, we need to be giving. It should be a part of our spirit. Should be something we should be willing to do because we are thankful for the salvation we had through Jesus Christ. And we know that is uh, uh, us walking closer with the Lord because that's what he gave. If you're thankful for what he gave you, see the riches that you have, don't start with money. Start with salvation, the joy of your salvation. And when you when you live in what you got, see, when you notice and, and stand and, and find thankfulness in what you got, everything else you're going to give to the Lord. See ye first the kingdom of God and all his and his righteousness and all these things shall come upon us. Oh, there's so many things that the Spirit is talking. We, we have a month. We're going we gonna to get through it. I'm about to bring it to a close. The grace of giving, y'all, this is like such a powerful story. Oh, it's almost should be two or three because there's so many other things that Paul taught in this chapter about giving. I would encourage you to read 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 and read how Paul talked about the Macedonian church and how they gave with the little bit they had. And then it, it wasn't the amount that they gave. They didn't give with like a tenth. Like we just kind of, the church kind of teaches us the tip. No, they gave according to the heart that they have. See, according to what they had. And watch, and it should, and do it with an open heart, with the willingness to be, to receive it and live by it. And watch how it empowers your life. I'm ending with this. And when you, when you have faith, when you believe it and you act, See, that's your faith. And one thing I can assure you, you can't beat God giving. When you give, he will give back to you more generously than you ever had, than you could ever imagine. Trust it. Just try it and see. Bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, we come to you today, Lord. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Lord, we come to you today, Lord. Thank you for your word. And Lord, we come to you today, Lord, thanking you for your son, Jesus Christ, and the salvation that he has given us through his death on the cross. Lord, you gave us, Jesus, you gave your life so that we may live, Lord. We just want to say thank you. We just can't thank you enough for what you did for us. Lord, we pray that we can live out the life that you have secured for us in the way that we live our lives, that we can walk in the salvation and the victory that we have, that we can live in the joy that you're secured by giving your life and the salvation that we have to Jesus Christ, that we can have the joy in the midst of all the, the, the terrible circumstances that could surround our life as long as we live here on this earth, Lord. Lord, help us to walk and live and stand on the joy that we have through your son, Christ Jesus. Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you continue to, to strengthen us through your word. See, Increase our faith, Lord. Faith is strengthened through your word. And we pray that your word goes forth, Lord, and finds fertile ground. Lord, we come today, Lord, also praying for uh, healing on the bodies of those who are sick right now. Lord, healing on the minds of those who, who are worrying right now, have anxiety and depression, and they're just worried about something that, that, that they're afraid of, dear Lord. Lord, I just also pray for the spirits of each and every person here, Lord. I pray for healing on their spirit. Lord, if somebody under the sound of my breath, Lord, can't forgive themselves of something that they did in the past. Lord, heal them of that sin. Lord, they believe in you. That sin has been forgiven. Lord, help them to forgive themselves and walk in the freedom that they have through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask all these things in your son, Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Amen, everyone. Thank you for joining in. With us on our uh, Bible study, I pray that something is said that blesses your life. We're going to continue on in, in the vein of Thanksgiving. Next week, we're going to look at thank, being thankful. They get ready, ready to go together. But this week was giving. Next week will be on, on, on thankfulness and, and um, 
I encourage you to read chapters eight and nine. It really, I'm telling you, the church in Macedonia never really knew this story. And, I, and I've been reading it and I've just fallen in love with it. I hope it blesses your life as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Enjoyed the lesson. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reverend Evans. Good. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you, Sister Barnett. Good to see you as well. Glad oh, to yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, Reverend Evans. Keep giving. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you for helping us. Thank you for Amen. helping us get Amen. out of the Lord. Old Testament and live up under grace. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. It holds us to a much higher standard. That's and a good thing, though. In a good way. It's, yes. it's, it's, it's all uh -huh. good. Oh, yeah. go deeper. Oh, go yes. deeper. That, yes. That's a good way to put it. Go deeper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a witness. Amen. What you just said a second ago, Lord, have Amen. mercy. I seen a flip it. Oh, no. So I'm trying to start the Bible study over. Okay. <laughs> all right. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He <It> just stopped <laughs> that. Good night. Good, good night. night. Love Bye. you. Love, Bye. love you all. Thank you all so much. Love you too. Bye. 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 Bye.